Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to show you how to take any SVG file, so that's a scalable vector graphic, and then turn it into a neon sign. Not only am I going to show you how to do that, we're also going to set up this little wall here, and then I'm going to quickly jump into compositing and show you how we can actually get that sort of glow effect, which is really simple with the glare node, because without it, it looks a little bit flat. But once we add that glare and sort of t dial it in a little bit, we get this nice sort of foggy glow, which looks really good on a neon sign. So this is a fantastic beginner tutorial. Um, you can grab any SVG, like I said, on the internet and just go ahead, turn it into a neon sign of your choice. And there's millions of these things on the internet and they're free. So let's jump in and I hope you guys enjoy. So go ahead and find yourself an SVG. So you can go on the internet and I just typed an SVG and this is one called SVG Repo, which I use a lot. It'll probably be the first one that comes up. And essentially you can come down here, you can see there's already some options on the first page, but you could just come here and type in something. So I might type in cat or anything that I want to find. And you can see here, there's all sorts of SVGs that pop up. Now I think I went with a lighthouse, um, which is kind of what I'm gonna go for with this tutorial. And you know, you can go through and pick whichever one you want, or you can get anything you want. It doesn't have to be what I'm using, but I'll put the thing that I'm gonna be using in the description below. But once you have it downloaded, you're just gonna click on um, download SVG, whatever you decide to go with. And for me, that has just downloaded here and it's in my downloads folder and you can see here it says .svg. It downloads pretty quick. And then just go ahead, type in Polyhaven if you want. And then you can go ahead to their assets, go to textures. So it's just polyhaven.com and then you can go over to brick and then over here you can see all sorts of different brick materials. You can go ahead and click on one that you like and you can choose the resolution. You can choose Blender if it's not already by default and then just click download. All it's gonna do is download a zip folder and then you're gonna extract that zip folder. So once you have that folder, just know where it is in your computer because we'll be using it in this tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into Blender now I'm using Blender 5.1 and I'm gonna select everything and just press delete. And I'm gonna to go to edit preferences and I'm gonna come here to my add-ons and just type in SVG and make sure scalable vector graphic is enabled. That's important. If that is enabled, you should be able to go to file and then go to your import option and then just go to the SVG, scalable vector graphics, click on it. For me, it's inside of my download. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that SVG and go import SVG. And you can see here, it's really small. So I'm just gonna make sure to select everything. I'm gonna go S to scale it up a bit. And then I'm gonna go to my, um, I'll just type in RX90 to rotate it upwards like this. And then I'm just gonna hold in shift and select the middle bit because there might be several loose pieces. And I'm just gonna go control J and just join it all together with control J. Then I'll just roughly move it in the middle of my scene here like this. And at the moment, if you tab into edit mode, you can see this is made out of sort of like curves, but they're kind of filled in. And there is a quick and dirty way you can get rid of this, but it works quite well. You can go into object mode, shift A, just go to your mesh or your curve options, add in a Bezier curve, select your SVG, hold and shift and select that curve and go control J, join it together. And then inside of edit mode, just select one of these handles, control L and then press X and just delete those verts. And now we have them like this. Really, really cool. So now let's go over to our data properties for our curves. Let's go over to geometry. And now you can come here and give the bevel a little bit of depth, okay? So in some areas, it might not look quite the way you want. And in that case, all you have to do is come in here and just grab these handles, just maybe move them a little bit or rotate or even delete some of the handles to clean them up. Um, but it's generally not that hard to do. So anywhere where it looks a little bit skewed, just try doing a little bit of movement or rotation of the handles, um, just to do a little bit of cleanup. So in this case, it's just a few places where I have to come in here and just kind of clean it up just slightly. Thankfully, it's not too bad. So it's just a few small handful of places. Maybe rotate it here a bit, just give it a little bit of adjustment here. So yeah, I've cleaned that up a bit, looks a lot better. Didn't take that much effort. I'm gonna tab back out and inside of um, object mode here, I'm gonna actually select this thing. I'm gonna go Shift D to duplicate and I'm gonna go Y and move it back till it's sitting and almost touching the other one. We're gonna select the one at the front, the first one. I'm gonna go to our materials, give it a new material. Once you've given it a material, just come here and call it neon. And then let's grab the other one here at the back. We'll give that a material. And let's call that frame. 
And then all we're gonna do is in our right view, we're just gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to our Mesh Options, add in the cylinder, RX90, hit Enter, and then just S to scale that guy way down, and then S, Y, and scale it out along the Y, just to make sort of like a rod, in which case you're gonna kind of take that rod and just place it somewhere here, we're sticking into that frame, and then in the front view in wireframe, you can just go Shift D to duplicate, and you can just randomly duplicate that and place it in random locations, just where it looks like it needs support. We don't want any free floating segments, right? So just bringing them over here, anywhere where it's sort of like a loose floating piece, just duplicate, Shift D to duplicate and just move. It can be random, but just make sure it kind of makes sense. So I've just made all of these support structures like that. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go Shift A, we're gonna go to Mesh Option, add in a plane, RX90, hit Enter, tap into Edit Mode and scale it a little bit like so. Control R to add in a loop. So we've got two squares now, two faces. Right click and go Subdivide and then go to your Subdivision tab and let's give that 30 subdivisions. Tab back out and then let's just maybe scale this guy up a little bit more and then G, just slightly move him back and up like so. Just so it's sitting here like that. Then what we're going to do, we're going to go to file, we're going to go to append and this is really important that you know we extracted that um, for file that we talked about, the zip file from Polyhaven. So for me, I have that extracted in a folder on my computer and I just downloaded the brick one, which I have somewhere here. I'm just going to go ahead and find it. So it's just called brick wall 05. That's the one I showed you. I'll quickly show you over here. It's just this one the brick wall 05 that I downloaded, extracted that zip file and back in Blender. This is it here, that extracted file. Inside of there is a texture file and then a blend. We're gonna double click on the blend and then go to the material and then click on that brick wall and then append it. And then click on our wall here, come to the drop down, and give it that brick wall. Then let's go to our render settings, change it from the render engine from EV to cycles. If you have a GPU, I recommend you use it. And then for your max samples, let's go 445. Then we're gonna select our neon, the first one here that we added that neon material to. Let's go to materials tab. And for now, let's just change the surface from principled and we'll just type an E and it should come up with a mission. There we go. So now if we go Z and we go rendered, we should see this. Now, if your brick texture is off, just select your wall, go over to your shading and then in rendered view here, you can have a look, but just come here to your scale and you can change the mapping. So I might make this two just to make a scale a little bit bigger. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that neon bit. At the moment, it has the emission that we've added. And let's go shift a search and type in geometry. And we're gonna just get an input geometry. And let's just go random per island and plug it into the color. Then go shift a search and type in ramp and get a color ramp. Place it on here and change it from linear to B-spline. And this is how you can make the random colors. Actually, we wanna change it from, we actually want it to be constant, there we go. So now you can make these different colors. So I might make one of them a pink. One of them I will make maybe like a greenish blue. The other one I might make like a bluish color. And you get the idea, you might even make a yellow one. That is just the color yellow. And what it's gonna do, it's gonna take each one of these random floating islands, and if we go Z and go render it, you can see it gives them random colors. And then what we can do is take the strength and make it eight, or maybe let's go for seven. There we go, that looks good. And now you can see it's shining on our wall. Now, let's go back to our layout. Let's grab this wall and go Shift D to duplicate, just rotate it. And I'm just gonna have a corner wall here. And then over here, I'm gonna go Shift A, I'm gonna to go to my camera option, add one in. I might just move my camera back a little bit and then press zero to go into camera view. And I'm just gonna kind of line my camera up here like this. And then I'm gonna go shift A, I'm gonna go to my light option, just add in an area light. And this area light is sort of like the outside ambient lighting. It's gonna kind of come from an angle like this and under the light properties, I'll give it a strength of 200. I'll increase the size quite a bit and then make it slightly bluish to give us that sort of nighttime light feel. And if we go into the camera view and we go Z and go rendered, you should see this is now what we have. And that's looking pretty good. Okay, so I might just go for something like that, nice and stylized, but still looking kind of realistic, which is really cool. <clears throat> so um, I'm gonna go ahead and just save this to my computer, the blend file. And if you want to, if the projection mapping on here looks weird, just type, tab into edit mode, 
select all of this and press U and just go project from view in the front view. And then it should fix that brick issue, but you can go into your UV editing and then just scale that until you feel that the scaling feels right for you. So maybe something like that looks pretty good, but you get the idea. So I'm gonna go back to my layout and go into the camera view and I'm gonna make sure everything looks right and then I'm gonna go render and I'm just gonna render this image. And here you can see it's now rendered, but it's lacking that sort of glow, that atmospheric sort of fog, right? That you get around the, uh, the sort of like ghost effect. So the way you do that, once you've rendered, is you go over to your compositing, you click here on new, and then what you do is you go shift A search and get a glare, get a glare node, place that filter on here on the cable. And you can press V to zoom back a little bit if you have to, but you can now see we have this glare effect, right? And what we can do, I'll strictly move this over, with the glare settings here, we can actually change it from streaks to fog glow. And then we can come here and bring down that size just a little bit. And we can take the saturation maybe up a little bit in value. And then the strength, we made make that like two. But now you can see we have this sort of nice looking glow here that I'll quickly zoom into. And if I actually remove that, right, mute it, you can see what a difference it makes in the realism. So there we have it, guys. That is how Right? That is how you do this in Blender. It just looks really, really nice. It's super easy to do, and you can take any SVG online and quickly turn it into a neon sign. So I'll see you guys next time, and thank you for watching.